coastal wetlands are among the most biologically rich habitats on Earth. Millions of the world's migratory birds and a huge number of plants and other animals depend on coastal wetlands for their survival. Not only are they important for wildlife, but these wetlands also play a vital role in absorbing carbon from our atmosphere. This is often called blue carbon, and habitats such as salt marsh, seagrass meadows and mangroves can absorb more carbon than forests on land. Coastal wetlands also help protect people. Mangroves and salt marshes act as natural flood barriers, shielding communities from storm surges. And they are nurseries for vast numbers of fish and other marine animals that millions of people rely upon for food and for their livelihoods. Yet, as valuable as our coastal wetlands are, they are nonetheless under enormous threat. The world has lost more than half its coastal wetlands in just the last century, drained for farming, building and industry. So now it is vitally important that we protect and restore what remains and halt further losses. Work is already being done around the world on coastal wetland projects that not only help wildlife, but also benefit local people. The very key to the success of these projects has been the support and hard work of these neighbouring communities. On the island of Grand Cayman in the Caribbean, volunteers of all ages have signed up as mangrove rangers to protect and restore the central mangrove wetland. Growing up, I was surrounded by mangroves, but I didn't know what they were. We were never really taught what mangroves were or how important they were. So when I got older and I learned about the immense value they have for the country, and I want to protect that, there's a lot of social and economic benefits they have for Cayman. Uh, they're important for our tourism and fishing industry because like the ecosystems are all interconnected. So the mangroves they act as a fish nursery and those fish when they grow up they go out into the coral reefs and that's what tourists come here to see. They come here to see our reefs, they come here to see our fish and then the fishermen are able to get the grown fish and feed their families. Nature-based solutions are often the most effective and cheapest way for many small island states around the world to prepare for the effects of climate change. For example, a lot of our rainfall that we get every day is from the mangroves that are here on the island. Without that, we, we would have much less rainfall. And so that helps to combat the expected effects of climate change, wherein we're expected to experience more drought. But we're also expected to experience higher rainfall events all at one time, so more flooding events. And of course, mangroves are famous for acting as natural sponges, and they can absorb all that extra rain and protect nearby communities. Also, um, mangroves, coral reefs, and seagrass beds help to protect the communities from the hurricanes and, and tropical storms that we're expected to see. parts of the world, rising seas are wearing away the coastline. The response has often been to build hard sea defences, but these have had a detrimental impact on wetlands and are no longer adequate in some areas to keep the sea at bay. This was the case at Medmury on the Manhood Peninsula in the south of England, where the sea was threatening to breach coastal defences. Today, this is a huge managed wetland of tidal mudflats and salt marsh. It is the result of the largest coastal realignment project ever undertaken in Europe, 
a project by the Environment Agency that now protects almost 350 homes and farms from flood risk. The creation of new tidal wetlands is attracting wildlife species not seen along these shores, such as black-winged stilts and even starry smooth-hound sharks. And the impetus for this huge project came from a campaign by local people. The coast was protected by a shingle bank that went right around the peninsula. So the fear was that it would take one big storm and the shingle bank would be broken and the water could come in which could put homes at risk. So the idea of creating an inland bank system and breaking open that shingle bank would mean we were essentially in control of where that seawater would go in the event of a major storm. There were opportunities to create something worthwhile, both environmentally and in terms of climate change mitigation, but also economically for the area, because being a coastal area, tourism is our main economy. So the volunteers are primarily uh, from the local community. They come to help us out with practical um, conservation projects. Um, like today we are managing one of the islands here for Aversets. They also take part in managing islands for our tern colonies and also reed beds and many of our scrub areas as well. Such is the global importance of coastal wetlands for migratory birds that four have been designated UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Among the most recent additions to the UNESCO list are substantial parts of China and South Korea's Yellow Sea coastal wetlands, an expanse they share with North Korea. The Yellow Sea provides seasonal food and roosting sites to 50 million migratory water birds, such as the endangered spoon-billed sandpiper and the hooded crane. These wetlands also provide a living to local people, who are able to fish sustainably using methods that have been in place for centuries. Chongming Dongtang Nature Reserve in the Yangtze Estuary near Shanghai is the key coastal wetland in the southwest Yellow Sea. Here too, efforts by local people and conservationists have proved successful in safeguarding the wetlands from drainage and development. Coastal wetlands are the hidden gems of our ecosystems. Their hard work in soaking up carbon, supporting wildlife and protecting and providing livelihoods for our communities continues to be overlooked. At the current rate of loss, a further third of coastal wetlands could disappear within a century. However, with urgent action, we have a chance to turn that tide. We must look to every opportunity to reclaim, recover, restore and revive our coastal wetlands for people and for nature.